Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much. You're to do this with me. Sorry? I really do appreciate it. Oh, no. Thank you so much for having me. It will be exciting talk. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, folks, can you can we show each other some love, hugs? You know, Hi, everybody. Her. Just let her know that we <laughs> love her, we appreciate her, <laughs> and what she does also, um, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about shortly. But yes, let's show some love. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and a big welcome to you. Yeah, I was saying, I'm sure you heard because I know you joined as soon as um, I went live. This is the first one yeah. on Because Manners Matter. So I am so excited. excited. <laughs> yes, yes. And the topic wedding, wedding etiquette. Hmm. Yeah, we can't wait to hear what everybody has to say today. It's a big, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> Okay, so folks, um, again, welcome to Tola Izika, our guest, who's agreed to do this Insta Live with me. Really do appreciate you. We've been trying to do this actually since, was it March? Like, yeah, exactly, like a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, it was, it was planned <laughs> for March then. Was, anyway, we're finally here, so thank you. Yeah. Um, so let, before I introduce Tola, let me just tell you why, um, what etiquette is about. Because sometimes when people hear the word etiquette, they think, oh, it's just a bunch of rules that people have just pulled from the air. But you see, if you were, if I was going to define <laughs> etiquette, I would say etiquette is about having respect and consideration for others. Just thinking about other people, not just yourself. So even as we're, today we're going to be talking about wedding etiquette. So it's the bride, the groom, the guest, you know, everybody just thinking about everyone else so it's not just, even though it's the day of the is a bride's day or the groom's day but they also put a lot of things into consideration thinking about their guest so etiquette if you're going to say what is etiquette it's about having respect and consideration for others in whatever it is that you do be it wedding etiquette uh, maybe it's sorry be it having a wedding a party anything and everything that we do at work because we have work etiquette we have um, telephone etiquette, you know, loads and loads. But today we're starting with wedding etiquette. And no better person to bring on, to join us, to have this <laughs> wonderful discuss discussion or conversation about etiquette than Tola Ezekiel. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I've known Tola for, oh gosh, many, many more years. Many, many, many years. Quite, quite a few years. Now. Quite a few years. <laughs> yes, I've known her for a long time. And um, if I was going to describe her, even outside of what she, uh, she does, I'll say she's, one word I'll use for her is she's consistent. She's hardworking. And, um, okay, let me tell you a, a bit about her. So Tola is the um, lead event coordinator or, or lead event <laughs> consultant, rather, for Royal Weddings. And she's been doing this for nine years now, I believe. Um, so yeah, nine years in September. Nine years September twenty thirteen. Yeah. Wow. Well done. And you're still going strong. We know <laughs> that you're still going to do it. <laughs> by God's grace. By God's grace. No, well done to you because I we know that sometimes people start things and then it fall, you know after a few years you know folds up. But you've been going for um, quite a few years now, and I need to say this to um, anyone that cares to listen. So I sent out the flyer to um a few people and a lady sent this response she said this about tola this is what she said she said you've picked the best in wedding etiquette she's good gentle always smiling and never loses her cool and i must also add she's very well organized so woo! <laughs> wow thank, thank you whoever sent that thank you so much <laughs> well done so yes well done yes Tola you can see the well done Tola to you. <laughs> thank you everybody <laughs> so as most people know it's wedding season now and that's why we actually decided to go with uh, wedding etiquette now of course Tola since you've been doing it for a night in fact you've done about a hundred weddings you said yeah, I'm there. Yeah. 
<laughs> over the years. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. A hundred. That's a lot, actually. That's a lot. Thank so you. I'm sure you've had your fair share of um, uh, <clears throat> things you can tell us about wedding etiquette. <laughs> the do's and the don'ts of wedding etiquette. But, you know, today I thought it would be nice for us to just start with maybe from when the, a couple, when they get engaged. Okay. Um, so what are the first thing you would say? So somebody gets engaged. What is the first thing, first etiquette thing that, or the proper thing to do, what would you say? Well, I'll say before you post on social media or anything, the yeah. first thing to do is to inform your parents, grandmother, you know, the important people in your life, right? Just to let them know before he actually goes out to the world. So that's the proper thing to do. You know, from family, like parents, obviously, if they're not... Sometimes with proposal now, people are actually involved. Maybe like the parents, you know, they might have been involved with, you know... I mean, the, the groom will probably have spoken to the parents. They know yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. But if we're not physically present when it happened, so they're the first people you need to actually call and tell first before he actually goes. Because this is the day of social media. Even sometimes, <laughs> the parents... <laughs> The parents are finding out about the engagement on social media. No, that's not, yeah, that's not proper. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, apart from, so even before you post it, because sometimes you send to your friends, or if that's if other people are not involved, and you let them know. So, other people should also not post it. Absolutely. Until, yeah, yeah. Because, mm -hmm. and what's, what's really even important is to actually check, because um, not everybody wants their business on social media, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's even really important. So if your friend gets engaged and, you know, they tell you, you know, of excitement, calls her best friend and then, you know, say to, to the best friend, oh, I'm engaged. Like, you know, and I know sometimes we do it out of excitement. Oh, gosh, my best friend is engaged. The next thing I'm going on Instagram or whatever and just posting there. But it's not the proper thing to do. It's, um, it's better to actually check with the couple, you know, with your friend, you know, the bride, whoever, the groom to check if they're happy for you to actually post this. It's actually fine for you to post it if they announce it. Let's say you found out on social media and they've posted it themselves. Yeah. Then, oh, then that's absolutely fine because for them to have announced it on social media is because they don't mind, you know, the engagement being on social media. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So when ideally, when would when do they when do they involve an event planner? Um. From, from, from when, to, what I always say though is that, I mean, when you get engaged, you know, couple, bride especially, they're so excited. Yeah. But I always say, try and enjoy it first. Like, you know, maybe just en enjoy your, your, you know, just being newly engaged before you, because wedding planning is, is an intense process. And as much yeah. as your planner takes away all the stress from you, yeah. but you still also want to, you know, I mean, like, just enjoy the fact that you just, you know, just, just don't just propose to you. Like, I mean, enjoy the moment, <laughs> enjoy the moment, you know, for a few weeks, but it just like to answer your question, it will be pretty much immediately once you're ready to start your um, wedding planning journey. Mm -hmm. Um, so if, you know, if the planner is something you're looking to go for, then yeah, I would say, you know, try and engage them as soon as, you know, you, you're, you're ready to begin. Okay. You just said something now that I'm going to pick up. So some people think that they don't need an event planner. Do you <laughs> really need an event planner? What, is, what would you say? To be honest, I always say wedding planner is a piece of mind investment. Woo! I love that. <laughs> wedding planner is a piece of mind investment. Okay, because... why? Because like the thing with planners is that your planner take away all like wedding planning is stressful. Like even even for planners, it's just because you just get used to doing it over the years, yeah. and it just just because you do it like it just becomes like you know second nature. But it's a stressful process, and you know so two people that I always say definitely hundred percent need a planner if you don't have the time because about like a minimum of about three hundred hours goes into planning a wedding, right? Wow. So, if you don't have the time, you know, with your job, with everything else, it can be really, really stressful and quite intense because it's like another job that you're taking on, like a project, pretty much. Right. So if you know definitely you don't have the time, then I would definitely say you need a planner. Or the second set of people is, you know, some people just, I mean, some people just go to wedding. Um, I, was speaking to, well, you know, I was speaking to a bride earlier today, actually, and she was saying, oh, wow, like, she, I didn't know all of this. And now we always go to weddings, but we didn't know all of this is what goes on. I was like, yeah, that's what it is. So if you, if you just go to weddings and you don't know where to start from, you know, you don't have a clue, then you definitely need a wedding planner. 
Okay. However, saying that, not everybody can afford a wedding planner. Not because wedding planners are so expensive. I'm just going to say, are you guys so expensive? <laughs> not because it's so expensive. I mean, for what it's worth, like, you know, it's, 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 it's worth every penny you pay, you know. Um, but even if for whatever reason, like maybe budget, you can't afford to get like a, you know, a planner. I would always say you definitely need a day of wedding, like coordinator. Okay. Because you can spend all this time, you know, planning an amazing wedding and everything can just go wrong on the day. Yeah. And, you know, you want to come on the day and actually have a great time. You know, you want to enjoy your wedding. Yeah. And you also want your family as well, you know, to come and have an amazing time. Not like everybody's having to run around. And, you know, things just not going according to plan. So, yeah. So, I would definitely say at a bare minimum, a coordinator, if you can't afford a planner. If you can't, if you can't afford a planner, at least... Like, so, a planner to, full, to, to plan the wedding fully. Okay. To plan, okay. Fantastic. Okay. So, let's now talk about more etiquette things. So, you're planning a wedding. You send out invitations. RSVPs. <laughs> What's your experience with RSVP? Now, you know some people... You know, I was thinking today... That I think a lot of people think that RSVP just means that rice stew very, very plenty. plenty. <laughs> just come and eat. They don't. <laughs> rice stew very plenty. <laughs> so tell us what are the things, kind of things that your brides and grooms have experienced with RSVP? What's the proper etiquette actually with regards to RSVP? Mm, with RSVP, particularly like when it comes to and, and the reason this is it, so you get people who, who do not confirm that they're coming to the wedding. And if you call and say, oh, why? They'll be like, oh, but I'm coming now. I'm your auntie. Or I'm your auntie. You should know, <laughs> you should know now. You know, and I, particularly Africans, like you, like, you should know now I'm coming to the wedding and things like that. But with RSVP, it's really, really important that you confirm attendance. And the reason being is because it affects a lot of things. You know, guest counts. Um, so the, the budget is based on guest count. Yeah. Um, food, just pretty much making arrangements and just making sure, you know, when you come to this wedding, you're looked after. Because if the couple, if you did not confirm it, and this, this happens a lot, where people just show up on the day without, you know, confirming they're coming, or the one that even sometimes happens, and I've, I've done a wedding where the bride's dad, yeah, it yeah. was the bride's dad, so the bride's dad didn't tell the couple it was coming with additional guests. 50 people showed up on the day. And because no. of the, Honestly, 50. 50 people from the father of the bride. And because it's the father of the bride, there is nothing like, I mean, I, and I always say, so I always say this to couple. I'm like, I can never, I can't say no to your parents. Like, I mean, I can say no to everybody else, but the parents. And do you know what, what then, what then happened at that wedding? Eh? So, I mean, we had like a really lovely decor, you know, we had chairs higher. We now had to start pulling out the ugly <laughs> ugly looking chairs in the <laughs> venue and you know it just wasn't nice well thank god for the caterers that you know i mean cat good caterers will always cater for more anyway oh, yeah well i didn't say that but <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so you know so with food we were okay like you know but it just it just it was just really a mess it was it was a mess wow. and you know you don't really want that like i mean you know your daughter's wedding or anything you just don't want that kind of thing so, and even with guests, even with guests themselves, like, you know, you confirming your attendance, you know, help the couple to be able to plan. Like, and I'm really, really big on experience as well. Like, you know, when I talk to couple, I want them to come and have an amazing time. Yeah. I guess to come and have an amazing time. But if we didn't know you're coming, we wouldn't have planned for you. So, you know, <laughs> confirming on time. And, and the other problem as well is that, you know, couple having to chase, sometimes you're having to chase and chase and chase and chase before people you know, confirm, that should not really, that's not proper, you know, from the time you know you're going to be able, you're going to be able to make the wedding, then just, you know, let the couple know, and usually closer to the time of the wedding anyway, we will send out a reminder, just to, because people's plans do change, yeah. and that's live, so, you know, but at, at least then, you know, if you then say, okay, I'm unable to make it, like, and I'm no longer able to make it, you know, at least they can plan ahead, so, but I would say RSVP is a big, big challenge, particularly among African, like African wedding is a big challenge. You just, people just don't, people just don't RSVP. They're like, do we really need to RSVP? Or the ones that say, oh, you know, I'm coming now. <laughs> please, folks, you know, I'm coming now. It's not going to cut it. <laughs> RSVP, please. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, 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 it's actually critical because it actually helps with a lot, you know, a lot of planning. Sometimes you have like place cards, you know, you, you, know, yeah. you have a meeting plan. You know, the oh. guests to allocate, the guests need to allocate people to table. And 
that task, it actually takes a while because sometimes you start to do it, the couple starts to do it and then they group 10 people to a table and then they realize that, oh, actually, that person and that person cannot be together. They need to then go back again, you know, so it does take time. Okay. But you confirming on time, you know, will help the couple, at least it will reduce the stress. Like wedding planning is already stressful. Particularly <laughs> if they're planning their own wedding, you know, at least you don't want to put um, unnecessary pressure on. on yeah, yeah. Okay, so we get that. RSVP, please, people. Yeah. <laughs> now you said when you're talking about place card, that's another thing I know that some sometimes or some something that our people do when they move the place cards around because they don't want to sit next to a particular person or they want to sit, they'd rather be sitting next to their their friends. Mm. So in that situation, what do you do? <laughs> The problem, you know what, the problem with moving place card is that sometimes place card is actually there for a reason. Okay. So for some, I mean, def depending on the food style the couple have gone for, if you've gone for plated service and everybody has selected their meal in advance, yeah. where you're seated is what has been given to the venue, the catering, or yeah. that has been given to the catering company. Yes. So the food you've chosen and they know you're seated in this location in the room. Yeah. It's what they will be bringing to you. <laughs> if you have another table, you will get vegetarian when you're not vegetarian. <laughs> because, but, and you know what? And all this thing does happen, like you said, you know, where people don't want to sit next, they want to sit somewhere else. But some of this thing that just that happens at a wedding is actually there for a purpose and for yeah. a reason, you know. And, and again, when this happens, like sometimes you don't really have much control over it because... Like, and I, like I always say, like, I don't know. So when it comes to like, you know, guests, guests, um, guest list management side of thing, the couple will look after that because they actually know their guests. Yes. So even just like, you know, allocating, you know, the, which sometimes when guests come, they think it's a planner because they come to you and be like, planner, why am I sitting on that table? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Unfortunately, I did not. This is one thing I did not get involved in, you know, because so, yeah. So when they've allocated you to that table, you know, it's for a reason, it's for a purpose, the place card is there for a reason. So, and sometimes even allergies, like, you know, so this thing, you know, the catering company have been told that X, Y, Z, you know, they have allergy to this and that. By the time you move your place card and they come and serve you something that you're allergic to, God forbid, <laughs> you know. So yeah, so some people know this thing are actually there for a reason. I think that sometimes people just think, I just for decoration. Not, yeah. not always. It's not always just for, <laughs> just to make the table look pretty. No, no. It's actually there for a reason sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I know I jumped to place card, but I, I haven't even finished with RSVP because I was going to ask a, a question. What about those who you send them an invitation? So let's say it's only for Olua Diaga, but I want to be, bring a plus one. Am I allowed to bring a plus one? Weddings are not cheap. I can hear you. It's gone. Right? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Is it? I bad? can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Yes. So what I'll say is that weddings are not cheap. So if you want to start giving everybody plus one, you need to think twice. Mm -hmm. Personally, the people I think should get plus one if you're married, if you're engaged, okay. if you're in a long-term relationship. Yeah. And, you know, maybe sometime you want to give your wedding party, maybe your bridesmaids, you know, you want to give them plus one. Because, I mean, being a bridesmaid is a lot. Like, it, it, these days it's not cheap being a bridesmaid or a groomsman. Like, you know, you're paying so much to just, you know, you know, be in that bridal party. So sometimes, you know, as a thank you, the couple might want to give them a plus one. But you cannot bring anyone else along and, you know, or the couple cannot give everybody a plus one because it's not cheap. Like, sometimes you're paying maybe like about 200 and something. By the time, if you, do, if you actually break it down and do a calculation, yeah. sometimes you're paying over 200 pound per guest for wedding. Wow. If you add decor, if you add food, if you add drinks. So, you know, you can't have everyone bring, bring their plus one. Yeah. So, like, unless they're married or in a long-term relationship or engaged, then I, I would say just, yeah, you just have to say no. Okay, even if you're in a long-term relationship or engaged, if I don't really have um, a relationship with you and I don't have enough space, am I allowed to just invite you without your other half? Absolutely. Like, I mean, you just... So, because if, 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 if your family... If, okay, let's say you wanted 50 people at your wedding. Yes. Your family member alone, between you and your partner, is already 100. Your bridal party, 20. So, in that case, that's already 120, for example. In that case, you only have 30 left. So sometimes you just have to say no, like, you know, and 
and one thing I'll actually say is that as much as, you know, people get upset when, when the couple say, no, unfortunately, you know, we're unable to invite you due to, people start to get upset. I, I personally just think, you know, people should just not get upset because there's just so much. Yes, like, there's so many reasons why, you know, couple... I mean, if, if, if people can invite the whole of London, I mean, some people would want that for their wedding, but unfortunately, yeah. you can't. You can't even find a venue. Sometimes, you know, capacity of venue would not even allow them to invite certain people. Yeah. Uh, or even, like, the major one, which is budget. You know, like I said, if you do, like, 250 pounds times 100 guests times, you know, 200 guests, it, it's, it's not... It's a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. So, yes, I would say you, you can't politely, you know, say, you know, as much as I love to have your, you know, your partner or whatever, your boyfriend, you know, to celebrate with us. You know, unfortunately, we, we just, you know, are unable to. But, yeah. I mean, it just, it's the approach. I'm really, like, I always think with everything, it's the approach. Like, you know, it's the way you go about it. And, and the thing about life is that the truth about it is that you can't please everybody. So, no. that's, yeah, that's, that's the thing. You can't please everybody. So I guess we just have to be considerate. Remember I said at the beginning, I said etiquette, etiquette is about respect and consideration. So we have to be considerate that like, weddings cost a lot. I mean, what you just said, that like, if we calculated everything, you're going, you're going to be paying about £200 per guest. Yep, or even more, even more. Or even more. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot, that's a lot. So please, if you're not invited to a wedding, it's not because they don't like you or love you. It's just because, they, first of all, like she said, there's a problem of um, there's issue of maybe capacity. They have a budget. Yeah. So it's just be, just be understanding. You know, understand that these people would love to have me, but you just can't. But there's a question um someone asked. So if you invite me to let's say um maybe I have a bridal shower, and you invite me, but now you don't invite me to the wedding. Is that a problem? Because if you're not going to invite me to a wedding, should you invite me to your bridal shower at all? <laughs> that's a see, that's that's a tricky one because you know generally before people that will come to the bridal shower anyway are people that are close to you. Yeah. So the chances that they're actually on the guest list for the wedding is is quite high to be honest. Okay. But okay. the reason I said it's a tricky one is just that in this, in like lately, what tends to happen is people plan surprise bridal shower. Yes. For bride. Yeah. So in that case, so if I'm planning, okay, if, I, if I'm now planning a surprise bridal shower for my friend, right? Yes. And I then decide to invite my friend, like someone that my friend went to maybe secondary school with or something like that, and they haven't spoken for many years. Yes. Surely that person does not have to come to the wedding. Like I'm, because I always say, if you have spoken to the person for so long, then they don't clearly, you know, unless you have abundance of money, like to spend, like they don't really have to be on the guest list. So that's where right. it becomes tricky because when you surprise or something and you didn't really have a you didn't really have a say in who was invited to the bridal yeah. shower yeah then then it's a bit yeah it's a bit of a <laughs> it's a bit of okay, a so she said someone just said she got a bridal shower invite but no wedding invites and she found it weird <laughs> yeah but it depends so and um, just to ask the person but um so who was it the bride herself that sent the invite yeah she said it was the bride that sent them my name to invite me Okay, so yeah, no, so that one I would say, I would say, because the thing is, you, you, want, you don't want to invite people to come and give you a gift, but you don't want to come invite them to celebrate. Yeah, no, so that, <laughs> that one is a bit of a, it's a bit of a tip. Yeah, no, that one is a bit. Yeah, of a, that's a, that's, I mean, that's, that's not, I, if, no, the, the thing is, the person, if you have a relationship with the, with the bride, with, with the, because I mean, for the bride to actually invite you to their bridal shower, like, you know, then you have a relationship with them. Yeah. Maybe just, speak, maybe just speak to them. And just because, because you know what, and, and you know the other problem sometimes is that when it comes to this invite, yes. it's, it's an oversight. It's not because the couple doesn't want to invite. They just completely sometimes just forget. And it's not even intentional. Like, you know, between, particularly when couple are planning their own wedding, like I said, it's a lot. So mm -hmm. between being stressed, you know, trying to manage this and manage that, and then there's the fi family dynamics as well. Like, you know, mom, <laughs> bless moms. You know, it's, mom, it's mom's wedding as well. Mom is wanting yes. her own way. Dad is wanting his own way. Everybody is just, you know, sometimes it's just an oversight and they just forget, not because they don't want to invite you. So I was saying, maybe what I was saying that with the bride, I mean, for them to invite you personally to their shower, then they, they probably did just forget. Okay. Well, she said she didn't attend the bridal shower. So. Okay. Okay. So, but I, I guess that's. I, 
I think that's the other thing. I guess for those that get married, firm up your numbers first. So you know who you're going to invite and who you're not. So that you don't invite someone to the bridal and then um, and they're not, uh, not invited to the main wedding. Um, someone, someone will invite you to the wedding ceremony. And not, but I think that's perfectly okay, isn't it? For you to be invited what? to the wedding ceremony and not to the reception. See, that, see, see, there's a lot of debate about this thing. It's also, about, it's also the same thing that people will invite evening guests, right? Yeah. So the, what's becoming common over the years is evening guests. Yeah. And evening guests because once all the formal parts of the reception is over and people are now on the dance floor, so there's not, you know, there's not such, like, you know, people are not so strict on numbers anymore. So in which case, you know, you can... And when it comes to venue capacity, they'll tell you dinner, dance, the capacity is different to, you know, maybe like a cocktail reception. So when people are standing, you know, yeah. you can have more people in there than, you know, when they need to be seated. So yeah. and some people will say, no, if you, if you didn't invite me for the entire day, I am not coming to the, to, I'm not coming as an evening <laughs> guest as well. <laughs> I'm not coming as an evening guest as well. So I think with the same, I think. Actually, you know, I thinking about it now, so I, I, I misread the thing. Because if I, you invite me to just the wedding ceremony, that means you don't want me I, to come and eat at all. I personally would be, I would personally, I would be against that. Yeah, just remember. What, what I would say people do as well is that, so people invite, so with certain venue, the capacity for the reception is bigger than, you know, where they're having their ceremony. So yeah. while sometimes the ceremony room can only accommodate, let's say, 100, and then, you know, the reception can take 250. Yeah. So what we then do in that case is have, like, it's like separate invites. So you invite, like, you know, the 100, you know, your, your close family and friends, you know, to the ceremony, and right. then everybody else just joins after the ceremony. So that's fine. But when you're then inviting somebody to the ceremony and to not the reception, then that's not... Um, that's not on, yeah. Yeah, that's not, that's not nice. That's not nice. Yeah. So just don't bother to invite, even know. If you know you can't, you can't, you're unable to accommodate them for the reception, then I'll say, then just then don't, don't bother. bother to invite, yeah. yeah, don't bother to invite the person at all. Yeah, because it will look funny. I'll just go for the reception, uh, for the ceremony. For the ceremony, yeah. No, no. Unless, unless, you, unless you say to the couple, unless you're the one that said, okay, I'll come to the ceremony, but maybe due to other commitments or something like that, I'm yeah. unable to come to the reception. But when is the couple that are actually doing that? That's not uh, right. It's not nice. <laughs> Okay, folks, please put questions in the question box so that um, Tola can help us in answering this. Okay, we a few questions were sent. Let me try and take. Um, what do you do if you get to the church late? Is it okay to get to the church late, as in why after the bride when they're walking in? Mm, no, 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 it's not. No. No, and while I understand that things do happen, I mean, some people will leave home on time and things will still stop, things will just happen and they're unable to make it there on time. But I think we need to get, particularly again, like, and, and it might seem like I'm actually, I keep going on about African, African, and African, but it's just the same way that on, on invites, we will usually put, maybe if the ceremony is starting at 11, we'll put 10 or put 10.30. I personally don't even think that's appropriate, but it's just no, something we have to no. do. It's not, it's yeah. not right. Yeah. It's not right. But the reason why we're always just still having to do that is because you can only start a, you can only start a ceremony when you have a certain number of people. Yeah. So imagine putting the actual time and then nobody showed up, you know, and it's just not nice. However, people that actually keep to time, if, if you're starting your ceremony on one and you put one o'clock on your invite, People will respect you and show up at let's say, at twelve thirty because they know they can't come at that one o'clock. Yeah. So you know us having to pull like an hour before and all of that is not even nice, but it's just because we just still always have to do it because people will still come late. And I mean, well, you, you know, know why come it, when the bride like I mean, yeah. Go on. Yeah, I was going to say, but you know why it's not even right because the Caucasians most majority of the time they'll turn up on time. They'll be there maybe yeah. thirty minutes before, and meanwhile, yeah, so you, okay. you put one. You know you're not going to start till 2. And they are there for yeah. 12.45. In fact, 12.30. But that means they're waiting for an hour, almost two hours. That's which is nice. Which really breaks, that, that breaks my heart. So what I yeah. always say to couple is, if we're doing what I've just said, like putting maybe an hour behind, I would say, please tell your guests, either the Caucasians or your African friends, you know, that you know always keep to time. Please tell them yeah. at that time. 
because if you don't tell them the exact time what you just said now that's exactly what's going to happen and then yeah. you find that they actually because because the thing is if you put one on your invite they're not going to turn up at one they know they can't because they, they would just assume that one o'clock is when the procession is starting so they want to come 30 minutes before and then before you know it they're waiting one hour 30 minutes you know yeah. so i always say to couple please 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 if we're doing this please tell your you know maybe your colleagues or you know people that you know will come on time anyway tell them this is the actual time it's starting because they would i can assure you they will turn up at 12 30 not one o'clock <laughs> not the one o'clock that yeah so yeah so, so that that's a valid point actually and i always and I always say, you know, even to anyone planning their own wedding as well, like, you know, I mean, if you're putting, if you're doing that for the sake of, you know, having people, enough people before you start your ceremony, but always let, you know, I mean, you know, you know your guests, you know your family, you know, you know the ones that are always late, you know, the one that are always on time, you know, so yeah, please just tell them and like verbally or, you know. You, you know, okay, we said, you said it's because people won't turn up at, on time. Is there anything wrong in starting your wedding as long as you have your family there? When I got my, I mean, many, many years ago, they started before the, the, the priest started the wedding. Before, they had already started singing the hymns and all of that when I got there. And so, I, I, th I, think, I, think, I think that we need to, I think we need to get into doing, because you know what I was saying, so I, was saying to, I was saying to a couple the other time, right, that by the time people go to two or three weddings, right, so let's say they put one o'clock on the invite, and, you're not, and you know yeah. why people, people show up late, sometimes they're like, ah, Look, this one o'clock that they've put on the invite, you know they're not starting they will start on time. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 everybody has gotten used to this kind of like lifestyle and habit. But by the time they pull one and they start at one, you get to the you yeah. went to they invite you to the first wedding. You got there, the ceremony was almost over. You go to another wedding, the ceremony was almost it's almost almost over. You just you know, you start to, to show up on yeah. time. And you yeah. know, things will change, but because we keep, you know, doing this over and over again, like it's yeah. Um yeah. Yeah, and there was, a, there was a question about what about when the um, bride and the groom turn up late. Well, that happened to me. I was actually officiating at the wedding, and I think it was over almost three hours that I waited for the bride to come, and I was, oh my goodness, I was not happy at all. <laughs> and the reason why she um, she came late, she said, was no. apparently she got she was almost at uh, the three church. hours. She realized that she left her bouquet oh, at home. That... So she now went back to get the bouquet. And it wasn't funny. And I thought you could have, I mean, maybe gone some, to Tesco or some Sainsbury or something and got in something, not kept all of us waiting for over two hours. Huh. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's quite important. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I. I just, I cannot stress, and this is not because I'm a planner, I just cannot stress it enough, like, you know, you having a coordinator on the day, because if you have a coordinator to start yeah. with, you will never yeah. forget your okay. That one, mm -hmm. you know, it's not something you will forget. And yeah. for whatever reason, if anything, and see, another thing that can actually happen, which, you know, people don't really know the behind the scenes, things that actually go on on wedding days. Yeah. So sometime beyond, like, maybe the vendor's control, like, I mean, I've had... I've done a wedding where the air stylist arrived three hours late, you know. But the thing is, if you have a coordinator or if you have a planner, they will be able to manage the situation, like, in the morning. So, you know, I mean, when this happened, I was just coordinating that wedding. And when you're coordinating, you don't have control over what vendors have been booked. So the couple would actually just book their own vendors. And, you know, you're just coming on board just to make sure the day, you know, goes smoothly and everything. So, yeah. but from the time that things start to happen in the morning... Because whatever happens from prep in the morning will have a knock-on effect for the rest of the day. So from the time things start to happen, you know, a good coordinator, a good planner will start to look for ways to make, you know, so all of these things would not happen. And I think, I think, I, I can't stress it enough how important <laughs> it is actually, because forgetting things like bouquet, and even if you didn't have a planner, your bouquet would not affect your ceremony. No, not at all. It not would not all. affect your... Is, is no. it, it's not like it's the ring that they've forgotten, like, you know. It would, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I've had with, with, with the wedding where they've forgotten um, not the, the, ring, ring. the Bible. They've forgotten the Bible. And it's so weird, you know. I follow someone's Bible. I mean, like, it's not ideal. You want your white, you know, fancy Bible, but you know, we'll just take somebody's Bible. <laughs> somebody's bound to have Bible in the church, like, if they come into it. So, yeah, so, yeah, no, all of these things, again, like, you know, when brides plan their own wedding or when they let, you know, maybe family and friends, because 
this is the kind of thing like if, if a family is managing the wedding the bride is like oh, i forgot my bouquet i forgot my bouquet the family too will be panicking ah let's go back let's go back and get the mm. you know mm. and these are the, these are things that you know does not affect the wedding in any way no. like you no. know no. it doesn't affect yes you will not have your bouquet as you're walking down the aisle but it's not the end of the world it's not it's During not the same minute, somebody will run back to the hotel and go and get it so by the time they come to your photo you know your bouquet will be present for your photo yeah well. Yeah, because oh, once yeah. you get into the into the ceremony, most of the time your bouquets will go right. They made of honor take it from you anyway. Yeah. 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 They put it yeah, they put it down. So it's just more yeah. of you walking down that aisle that you need it for, and it's not really the end of the world. It's not if it's not there. <laughs> but yeah, it's, all these things come with experience. To be quite honest, it's more of, of experience, and yeah. Okay, we've got some questions. Let's take some questions. Um, what do you think about the couple not revealing? reception venue until the church i've had I've, that happened i think i've had one or two um weddings like that where they've not revealed the destin the reception until during the service and couple will probably do that because maybe they know their family like i mean <laughs> when you have mom and dad when you have mom and dad that wants to bring 100 uninvited guests or that wants to send your reception <laughs> I want to send the reception venue details to everybody on, on WhatsApp. <laughs> Bless mom. One of my friend's mom the other day on her WhatsApp status, she put her son's wedding invite. <laughs> <gasps> so this wedding was in Nigeria, by the way. This wedding was in Nigeria. And when I saw it, I was just like, ah, oh, hi. <laughs> I'm sorry for this. Oh, my plan. goodness. <laughs> for whatever plan I did. Oh, <laughs> So, so see, that's not that's that's never been where that's happened. But if that does happen, it's just to control. Like, I mean, if the couple wants, if they feel like that's the best way to manage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know your guests, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know your family, you, you know, you 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 know. So, if that's the best way that you know to control to make sure that only the right people are at the reception, <laughs> by all means, I'll say, <laughs> do whatever. <laughs> I mean. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting what you said about because they don't they know their families they don't want because I know I've I've heard of like I think he's you know the father they said uh, ended up inviting fifty people I've heard of um, fathers and my father did that for my sister where he printed extra invitations so she gave me a particular number but my father went and printed extra invitations but my sister was so mad. <laughs> So maybe that's why they do that kind of thing. Possibly. Poss and you know, and this is why I always stress, I always tell the couple, please, please, <laughs> make sure the parents, just tell them, like, capacity, we cannot. Because from the time you tell them, from the time you tell them that they will, if they invite more people, like, you know, there will be nowhere for them to sit, yeah. that will help a bit to control. So even if they want to come with extra people, it might be the five or ten here and there, but not 50 or 100. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I always say, because this, this thing do happen, and it, it tends to happen a lot with parents. It's, it's mainly with parents. Uh, it's a lot, yeah, with parents. With parents. parents yeah. So this one I said I saw on WhatsApp status as well. It was the groom's mom. <laughs> she put the invitation <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the entire details. I was like, ha. Huh. <laughs> uh, yes, um, DBC photocopy invites. Yes. Um, okay. What? But we, 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 you know what? Even with invites now, invite doesn't, even if you don't come to the wedding with your invite, we... Yeah. I can't remember when, when I've ever asked anybody for invites at weddings. Because what we do is the sitting plan anyway. So oh. by the time you go and sit on, everybody has got seats allocated to them already. Yeah. So from the time you show up, you show up, you go and sit on somebody's seat. Once the person turns up, we will you politely... Get up. Yeah, my team and I will politely go to the table, check with everybody, you know, just, just cross-check everyone's name on the table. And if you don't belong there, you will have to get up because, you know, we'll show you like, oh, you know, unfortunately, this chair actually belongs to somebody. So, you know, I mean, have you mm -hmm. ever had people turn up now they're not invited and because there's not, there are no states, they left? Have you ever had that? No. And the reason that hasn't happened is because another thing with wedding is that as much as everybody wants to come and celebrate with you and, you know, they, they but this, this do come up last minute. I mean, someone is planning, they're coming to your wedding today. Let's say they wake up in the morning, not feeling well, particularly in this COVID, even this COVID time now where, yeah. people, you know, I mean, you don't want to now go to, you know, you, you know, you've tested positive for COVID, but you don't want to go. So, so anything can happen even before COVID, anything can happen last minute where, you know, at least yeah. you, on the day of the wedding, you'll always get maybe like five or 10 people that are actually unable to make it, you know, that, that, that is common. And what I always say to my couple is, 
unless you've told us that if they're not on that list, we should yeah. definitely not let them be present at the wedding. Okay. Otherwise, I'm happy to, you know, because rather than you, you've paid, what, maybe 200 and something pounds yeah. for, for a guest, and they're unable to make it genuinely, not because, you know, they didn't, they didn't come because something happened that, you know, they couldn't come. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you rather let your cousin boyfriend, your cousin decided to bring her boyfriend along, wouldn't you rather let that person spend that money rather than because okay. the caterers will not refund the money, the decorate, nobody will refund your money, so at least... But sometimes, you know, you get a couple that will say, no, strictly, if they're not on that invite, if they're not on yeah. the seeking plan, I don't mind, let it, you know, people that haven't shown up, let their money go, they don't mind go down the drain. Then in that case, we'll have to just tell them to leave. <laughs> I don't I like know why the venue uh, security comes, you know. <laughs> I like what someone put in, that parents are under pressure to invite their club members and special <laughs> groups. And it's true. <laughs> Especially African parents. Oh my goodness. But this is true. This is all <laughs> church members as well. In the case where parents go to like a smaller church. Yeah. And so and 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 bless moms, like bless moms, like they have the best intention in the world, but they just don't understand how things work. <laughs> like they've been to all these people's wedding, particularly let's say this is yes, the only how can this how would I say I can't invite them <laughs> to my own? <laughs> how would I say how would I now tell them that they can but but the solution to that is that you know the, Particularly when it even comes to African wedding, where you, you, you tend to have maybe like two, you know, at least you love the traditional wedding, yeah. and then you have the white wedding. So for the traditional wedding, go all out. Like, you know, invite everybody, all the church members, everybody, let them come. <laughs> but for this white wedding that the couple have decided to keep intimate, please, let's, let's try and just, yeah. Yeah, but that, what the person said is actually true. That is usually the problem. How do I tell this person? How do I tell mommy something that they can't come out? But yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, let's take another question. What about um, when no children are allowed? When you want, you don't want children allowed at um, your wedding, what are the kind of things you can say? The weddings for the invitation? Um, because people, sometimes people will turn up even when you've said no children are allowed. No children, yeah. In fact, I think one that I went to, they said, eh, but this child will stay on my lap throughout. So... The child is okay. <laughs> right. when, when couples say no children, when they say no children, somebody hey, don't say, What would people say? It's true. See, sorry, I'll go back to the children question. What would people say? That's another thing that mom, that's another thing that mom is. That's what, ah, what would people say? Me, I've been to, can you go on, Mrs. Something's wedding, Mrs. Right? Anyway, um, but when it comes to children, the thing with children is that children don't even enjoy the wedding. Like, mm -hmm. Most of the time, you see, children, they just there. They don't, they don't even, they don't even, they don't want to be there. You know, they just come because their parents, you know, just yeah. brought them along. Yeah. And the thing with children is that from the time the child can actually see it, you're paying for like a place setting for them. So decor, yeah. everything. Like, and it's just not worth it. So when they've said no children, like, I would personally say don't bring your children because when a couple have said you can bring your children, we would have made, you know, provision for the children. Yeah. Provision in the sense that, you know, if let's say we know there are going to be so many children, we could have a room in the venue with kids entertainer, where, yeah. you know, so, so even though they're at a wedding, but they will have a great time and, you know, they're yeah. not sitting there thinking, oh, why have I been forced to come to this wedding? Or, or even in the case of smaller children, they're just messing, just running around. And the thing with parents as well is that once they get to the, to the wedding, some are on the dance floor having the time of their life. They actually forget that they've actually brought a child and the child mm -hmm. is there pulling... <laughs> <laughs> fully the couple's age, just doing all manner sort of things, and so yeah, so please try and arrange for childcare. Like, I mean, couple would have the couple would have given you enough notice. No. Yeah. They would have sent you like a save the date to say we're getting yeah. married on this date. Yeah. You know, they would have sent you multiple like you know communications to let you know they're getting married. So you can you know you have enough time to arrange childcare, and if you know you know genuinely that you're unable to arrange childcare, then you know you can politely just decline the invite. Because Absolutely, yeah. Because by the time your child, they're just not going to be like they, there will be no provision for the child, and the child will just you know, the, or the children will just look out of place. Like, and even sometimes when you know maybe they've they've invited your children, and we only maybe in the actual room we only have two tables for the children. Yes. There'll be things for them to do. Like when I plan weddings, and I know they're going to be children, and they've allocated them to certain table. You know, I'll get things like coloring book, like you know, just some activity pack for them to actually do. So then that way they're not bored. I mean, no child wants to be listening to the groom, the best man giving a speech. Like, what's their business with what they're talking about? So, yeah, so please arrange childcare. And if you're unable to arrange childcare, yeah, you can, you, it's fine to actually decline invites. You know, don't feel like, yes, you can say, I'll, yeah, 
Yeah, because they feel like, oh, they'll get upset. I'm not coming. If you can't, you can't. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I think, honestly, again, it's about the couple. It's what they want. It's not about you. They're inviting mm -hmm. you, but they don't want kids because of all the reasons that Tola has explained. So please just look for childcare. If you can't, then decline. There's nothing wrong with it. As much no. as I would love to be there. Yeah. I can't because I don't have childcare. Then the couple, maybe they will say, oh, don't worry because your child is small. You know, you can come, but yeah, don't exactly. just take it upon yourself to turn up with a child, please. Child, yeah, please. please. <laughs> but I think what I do want, sorry, sorry to interrupt. You know, another thing as well with this no children sometime, right? Yeah. It's because some venues, because of the style of, okay, so, okay, when I do destination weddings, right? Yeah. Sometimes when I do weddings in like Santorini. Yeah. Because of the way the venue because of the, the, the way the venue are, some of them don't even allow children. Like from the time they know children are on your, they will not allow children. Because I mean, you know, those <laughs> high top uh, buildings and stuff, if one child now goes and jump, you know, they should just be because the venue does, cannot accommodate children. Like, you know, it could even be that, but the couple are not going to put that in the invite. So oh, yeah, they're not unable to, you know, so it, all they'll just say is that, oh, no children. So sometimes it's actually for a reason as well, not just because, they don't even want your children. Yeah, to... that's true because some. That's true because some buildings are not um or venues rather they're not licensed to have children. No, they're they... not. Yeah. yeah, they're not because if it's not child friendly, like you know, then they're not going to want children, you know, yeah, to, to, to be there. And for using that venue, sometimes the couple will choose the venue because they like the venue, and you know, you can't blame yeah. them for liking something. So. Because, I mean, with, with children, you can always arrange childcare. And, you know, like, you know, like we said, if you're unable to arrange childcare, then you can, you know, politely decline and just say, oh, fortunately, I'm unable to make it. Okay. Um, well, so many questions. Um, right. Is it okay for guests to take their own pictures as and when they feel like it? If the couple have said no, then please no. Because one thing you have to bear in mind is that Photographers, professionals have been hired for weddings. And when you find where guests are actually fighting with geographers or photographers because iPad uncle or iPad auntie, somebody has iPad, they want to, you know, they want to be recording and then, you know, they're blocking the video. And, I, I, and it's very funny because even some videographers and photographers have put it in their contract. Sometimes I'm reviewing this contract and I'm laughing because they put it there that if for whatever reason <laughs> your guest prevents us from doing our job, we will not take any responsibility for and these things <laughs> do happen okay now one of the things that become common now is unplugged ceremony where What's you know that? The couple, so unplugged ceremony is pretty much where they don't want you recording anything during their ceremony even the guests okay and you know and, and I, I mean this is social media days like you know everybody wants to post things as it's happening you know i'm live at so and so's wedding you know we're having the best time and things like that but you know i always say personally for ceremonies even if you want to post ceremony like you know yeah people say money later but not as it's happening not as, as they're saying their vows you've got it on live you know you're recording them as they're saying their vows you know all of that kind of thing or you know as the bride is walking down the aisle you're sticking out your ipad in her face <laughs> or you know iphone you know so <laughs> you know all of that kind of thing like so i mean you can record if you want to record but i think just be considerate because i mean this is the whole point of this conversation isn't there you know being considerate yeah. and things like that so, Yes. Just think about, just, yeah. just put yourself in the shoes. If you're walking down the aisle, would you want anybody sticking out iPad in your face or, you know, iPhone? Or even, even during the reception as well, you know, you're trying to dance in. And sometimes I find that I'm actually there, you know, trying to tell people that, oh, please, can you give, you know, the couple space to come in? And yeah. I think yeah. it just all boils down to being considerate and just, you know, thinking that, okay, this is my action. Will it affect anybody, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Okay. Um, hey, let's talk about what you can wear. There's so many questions, Tola. I'm trying to go. Um, is it okay to wear white to a wedding? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but however, no, actually, you know what? You're saying that I think traditionally it was a no, no, a capital N O. However, one thing I found, like, you know, lately, like, you even have, like, brides where their bridesmaids are wearing white, white and they yeah. don't have any issue with that. But the yeah. only thing is just that I would always say stick to the dress code that's on the invite. Right. And if they haven't specifically said that, said on the invite that it should be white, then just don't wear white. Because the problem you wearing white is, if the bride is not happy, 
<laughs> if the bride doesn't want you to wear white and you show up in white, <laughs> it's not it's not funny. So I'll just just get you know <laughs> blanket approach and just don't just don't wear white. Just, don't wear just white. Don't, yeah, just don't wear yeah. white because yeah. I mean, it's a like, no I mean, no. It's, it's, it's a no no. Some brides don't actually mind, but because you've not unless you personally ask the bride in advance that oh, do you mind me wearing white? And she says oh, no problem. Then just yeah, just don't. But you and, know, even <laughs> what first of all, Tola, why would you go and ask the bride? Can I wear white? No, Tola. <laughs> but you know, some, you know like some people don't wear white. If she specifically, <laughs> if she says oh, I want my guest to wear white or something. <laughs> fine but if not why do why go it's not your wedding don't ask if you can wear white please <laughs> well you don't uh, you, I, trust me trust me auntie you just don't never you just never know like a lot of things that just goes on at this wedding like some some of the things yeah. that people go and ask bride or ask couple and when they say to me and i'm thinking and you still want to invite this person to your wedding <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure about them come and actually talking about dress code right it's not even yeah. just about white alone it's not even just about white they just said i'm certain you should never, ever wear to wedding. And I even say this with vendors as well. Like, I always, I mean, I love vendors that dress smart to weddings. Like, I just don't think personally, even as a vendor, I know you're dead to work, but why do you want to wear trainers? Why do you want to wear tracksuit bottom? Why do you want to look, it's a wedding. It's, it's not a sporting event. Or, or in the case where some, some weddings we do, you see the ladies, the dressing is so inappropriate. Like, you know, it, it's more appropriate for clubbing and not wedding, where, you know, bits are hanging out. You know, bits are hanging out here and there. It just doesn't look good at all. It's a wedding, you know, at least for the rest. If you don't even respect anything, respect the fact that the parents are there. You know, I mean, it's 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 not that kind of... <laughs> it's Tola, not that you kind just, of... You know, you know, this is the topic. This topic, Joy, um, Joy is a stylist. She's here. And I'm always sending her messages that, why do people do this? You know, you're, you're showing everything at the wedding come no, on I, I, I've, I've seen i've seen a lot and sometimes i'm actually i'm female and i'm looking at them and i'm actually ashamed saying oh my like i just i just because it's just so so inappropriate like it's just not yeah. um no it's just yeah and i you know i would personally say please don't do that like you know like and, and not to say you should dress like <laughs> so i was gonna say mommy no, let me know <laughs> <laughs> Not, not to say not to say not to say you should be you know like but at least dress you know like dress appropriately like don't yeah no some, some dressing are really really no it's really bad and i think i think i think people need to actually address that particularly for summer weddings please yes please 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 especially for summer weddings weddings. especially yeah it's not yeah. nice yeah it's not nice at all it's not nice there was a wedding i saw um oh my goodness this person had on it was silver. It wasn't white, but it was silver. But if you looked at the bride, and you looked at this lady, you would have thought she was the bride. And it was way over top. It was over the top. And everybody kept saying, who is the bride? Who is the bride? It was just too much. It was too much. I, think, I, think that's, I think that's another one as well. And this happened in Nigeria. Where, where you go to weddings in Nigeria, yeah. people's makeup, you know, you will think they're actually the bride. And so one time I was racing and I was like, ah. And then somebody said to me that, well, the bride should know that people were like, no, the bride should not know anything. Dress responsibly. Don't, don't dress. Don't, don't go overboard as well. Like it is not your wedding. Like you're just a guest. Tola, do you know, I love what you just said. Dress responsibly. Dress Honestly, responsibly. because you don't. Yes. Yeah. It's so, it's key. It's so important. It's, I know what about black? Can you wear black? I, I don't see anything personally wrong in, I mean, not wearing black to wedding is actually, I think it's more of a traditional thing that Africans kind of like associate black with, you know, you know, maybe like when oh, they think you're not happy for them, that you're not happy for them. But no, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I've seen some people, you know, ladies show up in like lovely black dresses with nice colorful accessories and it just looks stunning, you know, so unless they, again, like, unless, unless they've said, like, I, I think the best thing to just do is just follow the dress code that they've put on the, yeah. That the couple have put on their invite. I think that's the best. Um... Talking about dress code, people, this is on a side. If you're having an event, so for example, if it's um, a cocktail event, can you let people know so that people don't dress inappropriately for it? Because a cocktail means that you're going to be standing most of the time. You know, um, let them know. Because sometimes I've been to events where it, well, they've said formal, but it's been 
dressed down really. It was a cocktail thing and it was more dressed down than formal. And I had on heels. I was standing for hours. I just thought if I'd known, I would have worn something more comfortable. Uh, yeah. Know, yeah. So please let people know the dress code where you have events. Okay. Yeah, it's sad that people try to undo the brand. <laughs> Honestly, this is no, no, that, that's not really, it's not, no, people need to actually stop doing that. So I, you're not the bride. And as much as, you know, yeah, you want people to, but t please tone it down a little, like at least <laughs> just, yeah. Cause sometimes you do get those ones as well that you're like, ah, <laughs> who's the bride? Like you said, like that particular example you gave. Okay. Um, let's see. What's another, is it okay to go to a wedding without a gift? Yes, why not? I mean, you, because to be honest, like giving the couple a gift, I think it's just a gesture, like it's just a good gesture. Like, but you I know, mean, I everybody's situation that. is different. If you, you go, do you know, I will say that, Tola, that ideally, because most people have um, a guest, what do they call it, wedding uh, gift list. Can you, if, I can't, they put it on their invitations yeah. or on the website. Ideally, give them the gift before so that you don't take it to the wedding and they're now having to find a way to get it home. So ideally, give it to them before. Yeah. But you know, so. but you know, some, you know, but you know some people genuinely okay, cannot let's... afford to give you a gift. You know, some people, you know, some people genuinely cannot afford to give a gift. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, you don't want to, you don't want them to feel, you know, any, anyhow that, oh, because I'm not taking a gift, I cannot come and celebrate with you. Because the truth about it is that the most important thing is them actually coming to celebrate with you. Yes. Like that's how, well, that's how I see it. And the gift yeah. is just, you know, an additional thing to be quite honest. Because if you can't afford it, then, you know, then you, you don't want to put people under yeah. pressure. Uh, you don't want to put people under pressure to. And you know, a gift, it doesn't have to be expensive if you want to buy it. That's it another doesn't have to be yeah. anything expensive. You know, you could maybe just think out of the box, what would they find useful at home? In their new home, then they're setting up. But, yeah, but you know the problem. You know the problem with what you just said now, though, is yeah. most people already have their, most people have already bought their house or whatever, and True. they have it all like ready. They have yeah. all they want, and they want yeah. maybe certain brand or certain yeah. things, which you know they've already, and they just don't want any any other thing you're giving them is really not. Um, it's so not. What really... about what about um, gift vouchers then? Okay, yeah, then you can do. Yeah, you can do. Give, but you know, with, with vouch, the thing with gift vouchers is that. If somebody maybe buys twenty pound, they might think, ah, oh, I give these people twenty pound voucher, it might look too like it's not. <laughs> so that was the only thing. Because it has the value, because it has the cost, the value of the actual gift, then they might yeah. think, oh, you know, because some people genuinely cannot afford a gift, they want to come and celebrate with you, but they can't yeah. afford to buy you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say don't put people yeah. under under that kind of pressure. You know, if, if they can, oh, then great. But if they can't, then okay. okay um Yes, there's this, you know, there's some, there's a question. Can you ask your guest to gift um, a certain amount? So are you saying, <laughs> are you saying, oh, um, for our wedding gift, we'll like you to give us 50 pounds? Because this, this question is, can you ask your guest to gift a certain amount? No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Because that almost feels like you're getting them to pay for their food and pay for their, yes. which, you know, you don't want to. No, that's a, that's a, no, that's a big no, big no. That's a big no. No, that's not right. That's not right. Um, okay, then. Can you ask all your guests to wear Ashwa beads? No. It's, it's, you, know, you, know, you know you do this thing in Nigeria sometimes, no Ashwa beads, no entry. Yes. Oh, in fact, my sister went to a wedding where, no, no, hers wasn't no Ashwa beads, no entry. Hers was... Um, Ashwa B does not guarantee you entry. Oh, you entry, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> she doesn't guarantee you entry. No, no, you can't force because, people to. Uh... Because people buy Ashwa B. I mean, I, there was a wedding, this was a few years ago. There was a wedding, I, uh, it was actually a family wedding. And people came with their friends that were wearing the same Ashwa B as us. Now, how did I know that they were not really invited? Somebody sat next to me, I was saying, um, where's, who is the bride's? Who is the mom's, uh, groom's mom? I mean, no, it was the bride. Who is the bride's mom? Is that, I was like, you don't know, you're wearing her, uh, Shwebi, you don't know her. You know, I'm sorry. Clearly, clearly, somebody sold it to them somehow. Oh. Yeah. Like, this is ridiculous. You don't know the, you don't know the couple, you don't know the, 
but because your friend invited you, you just decided to go. That you, you invite, and somebody just said in the group now, I think I saw something come up saying, I should be, they said I should be is a waste of money. And, and I, I I kind of will agree because the thing, some of the thing with some of this I should be is that you're just buying it, you're just buying it just to support the couple. To you're support, not, um, how many people. times do you, have, yeah, do you actually wear this I should be again? You wear this I should be again, you know. I mean, rather than buy the I should be, why don't you just use that money and even give to you? Know? But again, it's all personal. I mean, some people are really big on you know having I should be, and if that's what you want, absolutely go for it. But again, I, I'm just, yeah, I just don't. Oh. Feel like Sorry, I'm, I just need to I, respond to somebody that said, not necessarily, sometimes you only know one side of the family. This they person want to didn't buy, know fine. anybody. She didn't know the groom's side. They she didn't know the bride's them. side. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, okay. What's it? But you know, I don't think, I think most people nowadays, they um, they make that actually be optional. So you don't have to. You don't have to buy the ashrabi. I think most people make it optional now. So, but I don't think it's <laughs> yes. I, so and I know people. Sorry, Tal, it's, it's gone up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just um, um. There was a question I saw now. What about asking people to contribute towards your honeymoon? Personally, I oh, would say no. You know, that, that's that. actually becoming common. That's actually so people do like this honeymoon fund. Yeah, that's actually yeah. I've had I've had few couples that have actually done that. Yeah, I think that was well, probably. That... Go on. No, go on, go on. You think that probably one? I was just saying that I think they'll probably be frowned upon by maybe more Africans. Like they'll think, why am I paying for your honeymoon? Why are we having to pay for your honeymoon? But with Caucasian, it's perfectly fine. Like, I mean, there's honeymoon funds and things. And it's not, it's not any, it's not any issue. <sighs> well, okay. I guess maybe, I guess a lot of things have changed now because, you know, everything is, a lot of people do go fund me things for, but I would say, this is me personally, I wouldn't, ask anybody to pay for my honeymoon now you can now you can say um that the gifts you want monetary gifts which yeah, that's, that's are used that's towards but i won't be specific and say it's for a honeymoon no but you know why you know why people do that is because usually there's, there's so there's like there's their platforms their yes. platforms like where you can set up this thing where people just so you know you, you put a target like this is maybe you want to go to the Maldives or whatever you know this is how much it's going to cost yeah. and then you put people there so so it's more of people still giving monetary gifts but rather than them bringing in an envelope and giving you the cash okay so th this is why so 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 it depends on how you say it if you put on your if you, you shouldn't even put about gift on your actual invite anyway you know, no you shouldn't you shouldn't you should yeah. not you should not do that and you like, that's even yes yet. please that that's another thing we need to let people know because people i've seen people put it on their wedding invite you don't no. that's a that's a no no you should, no if you, want to put it, if you want to put a link to maybe your website or maybe an insert but not on the actual invitation itself so what people then do this thing about this honeymoon you know it's just so basically it's the link to so rather than them saying it directly that you're paying for a honeymoon, they don't really say it. it's more like so it's more like giving cash gifts as well. Like, but it's just not you're just not taking the cash 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 of the day. Maybe you're you know just putting it like yeah. <laughs> oh wow! But no, but it's becoming common. That's also becoming common now as well. Like you know, in addition to monetary gift, people because what people always say is like you know. What couple say is that all these things bring in all these things like we don't have any use for it like i mean yeah we're at yeah. the home we already have all that we need you know okay. so yeah yeah um i saw another thing caucasians ask you to pay for your drinks yeah i've, I've been to a wedding where that was done um, that's a no-no and that's even also they're also moving away caucasians are also moving away from doing that you know because it's not right and get people to pay for their drinks then you know just Maybe have like, you know, cocktail. Cocktails are cheaper than you having all these, you know, spirits or all the expensive drinks. Like getting people getting people to pay for anything at a wedding, food, drinks. I even saw some posts the other day on Instagram. <laughs> one girl that did one wedding in America, she got everybody to pay for their food or something like that. But their getting food. People, yeah, yeah. People pay <laughs> for their food. Getting people to pay for anything is a no. Yeah, personally, no, no, no. no, no. Right. 
instead of that, then just don't have alcohol. You don't have to yeah. have alcohol at your wedding, you know. I mean, just don't, yeah. If you can, I guess, the, like, the whole idea behind this thing is, I know you want to have a good wedding, but if you can't afford a wedding, then don't come and ask your guest to pay. It's not proper. Or reduce, reduce your guest count. Or reduce the, is, yes. Or yeah, reduce this is the trouble. Yeah. Most of the time, people are like, ah, I want to invite this, I want to invite that, I want to invite this. Then we talk about budget, and I'm like, it's not going to work. This number, mm. when I speak to a couple, like when I'm planning their wedding, when they give me the budget, and we talk about, you know, their style, their vision, you know, the vibe they're going for, and all of that. And when you tell me your budget, and I know it's not going to work, the first thing I would say to you is, can we reduce the guest count? Yeah. You can always reduce your guest count, you know, rather than getting people to actually pay for something, pay for their drinks, then just, just cut down on the numbers. Not everybody has to be there. You know, everyone will be fine. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let's see. Um, what about dress code for guests? Colors, do you come? I think we've talked about dress code for guests. We've yeah. About that. Okay, let's see um, all the questions that were sent in. Uh, yes, okay, Dora. When it's a buffet, people often pile their plates with food. Is that proper? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, I'm actually glad you actually mentioned that because it's so embarrassing when I see that at weddings. Because one thing, one thing people should bear in mind when it comes to buffetiness there are different options most times the minimum you will have is eight different items on that yeah. point so yeah. you can take a bit of everything and i think the problem is that people when people when, when people have a meal at home for example so they pile their plate full of rice with maybe plantain and maybe two pieces of chicken or two pieces of meat but what they forget is at a wedding there are different options. The only thing, you're, it's not just rice that's available, so please don't do that. Plus, you can always go back for seconds. Once all the tables have been called, the, 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 the buffet point is still left open. You can always go back. Yeah, please don't do that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when I teach dining etiquette, I always say that, please. That's why it's a buffet. Like Tola said, <laughs> you can always go back to get some more. But I guess the reason why they do that is because they think, oh, I have to go and queue again. It's okay. but, but there will be no queue at that point there will even be in fact talking about okay, queue is even eating yes yes yeah, by, the time, by the time we've called all the table usually there's no there's nobody left if you want to go you can go but talking about queue actually another key thing to address please if you're invited to a wedding and it's buffet and they have not called your table please don't get up please you know and, and the truth is that people get up because they think ah fish is going to run out ha ah, plantain <laughs> is going to run out a good caterer a good caterer fish would never run out i mean i've done wedding where every single option is available till the very end to yes. close the last table so please fish will not run out please <laughs> <laughs> please don't get up because that, that creates a lot of problem as well like yeah. well okay you're walking up to the table you know to invite everybody for dinner and then you find that you're looking around thinking oh we have not I haven't called that table, but you can see maybe two or three plates on the table. And you're yes. thinking, what is going on? Like, you know, and that's because they got up without, without being caught. So please, <laughs> please, please. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> please, please, please. Don't do that, yeah. <laughs> Fish will not run out or anything. That's the like she said, a, a good picture will have more than enough. So nothing is going to run out. Seriously. Always. Always. Honestly, always. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I think I saw another question. Oh, my goodness. Tala, thank you so much. This has really <laughs> been <welcome>. good. <laughs> um, oh, someone asked a question. What about the Stanley brand changing seven times, please? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> again I, i'm really big on i'm really big on this saying it's your wedding it's whatever it's your you wedding want. yeah however yeah. one thing i always say is that you change it seven times when will you actually get to even enjoy the party when literally <laughs> you're coming back we're whisking you off again to go and change another outfit you're coming back <laughs> five minutes later we're taking you again because you have to bear in mind the venues you know music off at certain time so we don't have the all night it's not an all night party <laughs> It's not, not my party. By the time you're changing and changing and changing and changing, like, but again, like I said, it's your wedding. If you want to be in seven outfits, like, I, I mean, like, you're only getting married once, so, yeah. but it's just, I, I can only give you my own advice and just, you know, let you know that this is the thing. But 
time you're changing seven times, you've missed like two hours or three hours of the party. If that's what you want, it's fine. You know, <laughs> because you most of the time you miss out because you would have gone to change and then <laughs> Yeah, and then you're back again. I'm sure you know we're whisking the bride and groom away again or the bride to go and change again and then Yeah. <laughs> yeah. because you want to make sure you have a great time i mean from start to finish you want to enjoy your wedding like yeah. again you're only getting married once so you want to have a great time like yeah. i am big on having a great time like yeah. you know yeah um but then if well if they're pregnant if they're pregnant i think most people give preference to a pregnant lady to go um to jump the queue so to speak um at the yeah. buffet yeah. Sometimes, okay. sometimes, sometimes we just don't. Cause maybe because they're sitting down, we might not see that that's the case. Yeah. But, but from the time pregnant they, and they have, or they have small children, I'm sure. What he points fine. out, me, or even if they approach themselves. And say, oh, oh, then that's dead, yeah, and that's absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm just, I'm talking about adults. No pregnancy. No child. <laughs> you know. I think some, someone just asked another question. I think we've talked about it, about the... Um... Yeah, someone asked another question about the bride and the groom arriving late. But we talked about that earlier on, that really you shouldn't keep your guest waiting. Yeah. Uh, um... And even not even just to the ceremony alone. Sorry, not even just to the ceremony alone. It's also when you... So if you plan your own wedding and you've put your own timeline together... Like you don't want, and sometimes, like, and I say, I can say this as a planner because sometimes the reason why people are having to maybe wait longer during the cocktail hour, you know, the pre reception drinks is because things are actually happening that, you know, is, we're trying to sort out behind the scenes, which, you know, obviously right. we don't want to be aware of it. And yeah. so this is why, so, this is the only reason why maybe sometimes people will have to wait maybe slightly longer before they're being seated because you know we're not going to come out and announce and say oh this is what's happening and things like that so you know we just have to try and you know find solution to whatever the problem is you know be behind the scenes and try and sort it out as soon as possible but you should never keep your guests waiting at all not even in any way and you know i mean i was just you want to come that. to your wedding and you want them to have an amazing experience you want people to see you 10 years and say, ah, your wedding, your woman have to say anything else. <laughs> With the way they say it, you're already been to, and all of this thing boils down to experience. Like, you know, you want them to have an amazing experience. But when they're waiting around for too long, either they're waiting for you to arrive or they're waiting, yeah, it's not nice. No, it's definitely, I, I've waited again, I've waited for, I think almost two hours waiting for the ceremony, uh, for the reception to start. And I think that's just not on, seriously. And if unless, you... unless there's something that's happened, unless there's something that's happened, which obviously you, you would not be aware of the, at the time, because they would, you know. But then, they're... don't you think that they should let us know? Somebody should go, go around saying that. So rather than rather than you will not say you will not say to the guest, so you will not say to the guest that okay, this is you know what's happening. But you know you can plan you know get your the coordinators to go around and you know do just say we do apologize for the wage you know we'll yeah. see you that's what i mean i'm not saying let us know that something happened okay to the yeah, bride. Yeah, 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 yeah. but at least like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just let us know that yeah. oh, we, we apologize we're so sorry we're going to start shortly blah 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 just so that people but you, know, but you know but you know what you know what can happen where you would not be informed is if there's no see all still goes down to having a coordinator or a planner because if yeah. the if if the per, if the bride and groom have given it to auntie to manage the day or friend and family, then there's nobody will really think about that. Like you know, get sure. your team to go around and you know sure. just apologize to people and just say, oh, we do apologize. You know, we will see you shortly. And I mean, those kind of words sometimes you know kind of will make people feel even more um, looked after and that you know that they're just not being ignored or forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. But when you don't have coordinator or planner, that's when sometimes there's a problem because, yeah, I mean, there's no one to go around and actually do that. Wow. Gosh, so, someone just said my husband went to a wedding and waited five hours. My goodness, that's a lot. Five hours for before the ceremony or five hours? She, said, she just said five hours and then food was not served until 8 p.m. Wow. Okay. Five, five, five hours for cocktail, pre-reception drinks. That's uh, that's a whatever long time. For me, personally, whatever is happening there. So let's say it's decoration issue. I am taking the guests in without any proper decoration. No, five hours is not appropriate. It's not. Oh, there's another one that I came across. It's your big day. Someone decides, without even telling you, that they're going to propose to their other half on your big day. What do you say to that? 
I think if you're going to do that, you need to tell the couple in advance and let them know. So they should let you know how they feel about that. You should not pull a surprise on. Because, <laughs> I mean, you don't want to take the attention. It's their day, you know, they should get all the attention. So if you're going to propose, and, I, I, and I've done a wedding where that's happened, you know, one of the destination <laughs> wedding where, you know, one of the friends had proposed, but you would have to discuss it with the couple, you know, in advance. And most time, they probably would not even say no anyway. But it's just, it's just a polite thing to do, you know, just don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know, it's okay, some couples might say it's okay, they don't mind, but personally, I don't think it should, not at, a, at somebody's Because, day. yeah, it's somebody's day, but it's some, somebody's you know, sometimes day, yeah. maybe for certain reason, maybe because, because, you know, I mean, you're breaking up. It's it, 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 it could have, breaking up. So that wedding can have something to do with their relationship or something, or maybe they or somebody that, you know. It's gone off again. Is this better? Yes, that's better now. Okay. Now, just saying that sometimes it could even be the reason they're doing it is for, you know, whatever reason, maybe the bride or the groom is the one that, you know, listen, but the, the, the bottom line is that if you're going to do anything like that, I, I personally think, as much as try not to, if you if, if you can, but if you have to, then you need to inform the bride and groom first. Like, you know, yeah. you, you should not just pull any... Yeah, not even even if it's not a group, don't let's don't let it be the idea that you announce that you're that you pregnant want to, yeah. or yeah something. To be honest, it's, it's not personally, it's not appropriate. But sometimes you know, there's yeah. there's different circumstances that surrounds different things that you just don't really know. So yeah, so that's why I said if you must for like for whatever reason, then yeah. But if you if you can, then yeah, just don't do it on the day. Don't. Okay, another thing. Um, speeches speeches mm. at weddings some i've been at weddings where some people have said things that are just so inappropriate you know you now start talking about the many girlfriends the groom had before or he or he dated this person or dated that person <laughs> what do you say tell that to that another no no he said no no and i and i mean you know Sometimes, you know, they want to say this to make people laugh or to, for please, please, leave all of that for your, or for the, you know, bachelors do or whatever they've done. Like, that's not something to come and be talking about at weddings, but, and the other, the unfortunate thing about that is because you don't, you don't really ask people for what going to say in advance and you just want to trust them that they'll just be responsible and just not say things that they should not be talking about but yeah but that's actually a really good good question um i think if, if you if you know i mean if the couple are giving you it's actually they think important you're important enough to actually also, speak at the let wedding, them know before then, yeah that you're going to be appropriate to, with what you say um, yeah speak. don't don't just go off that on. might help because sometimes but you know most time when this happens it's going to get up and then they're drink. nervous that's the problem sometimes. and when you're nervous you start to say that rarely happens auntie that rarely happens where people are not informed in advance when i'm putting timeline together with couple well maybe it does but i've just never experienced that where people are just called you know on the day to say you usually like I usually we usually put a timeline together with a couple. Okay, how many people are going to be giving speeches, and they would have said this is the person they've informed them. So okay. generally, people are aware in advance. Okay. okay, advance. Unless I don't know if this happens, but I've never experienced that where you know it's on the day that we're now to know. Okay. So people are generally okay. yeah they generally. So, I'll tell you, you know, the issue is that when that when, when that tends to happen, sometimes it's because maybe you know they've had a, yeah. a bit to drink and yeah then. <laughs> but boys, it's definitely. Oh my goodness! What are you talking? No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's it's, it's a no. It's not. Great. What's um I'm trying talking about or sexual positions? People talk about that at weddings. My goodness, that's a no, no. Oh yes, another thing about MCs. In a bit to be funny, they say loads of rubbish and do unnecessary things. Have you come across that? So that's why you, can't you have you. to know the MC you're booking. Oh, can you hear me? Is this, is this better? <laughs> yes, okay, can okay, hear you. Yes. <laughs> okay, no, I'm saying that's why you need to know your MC. It's Don't gone. just book any random The MCs I work with, they are not yeah. inappropriate in any shape or form. Like, 
I mean, so you just need to know who you're booking. Like, you just can't. And I always say to people, you can't just book people based on social media. Don't just look at Instagram, ask questions, you know, look, look reach out to people they've worked with before. Ask people, you know, have you, you know, you worked with this? Because the, the role of an MC is super, super, super important, you know. So, I mean, you want to make sure you book someone that's actually. And you know, it's it, like you said, it's so important to, especially if you've if you've seen, if you've been to a wedding and you've seen the MC, you've used the MC before, you're okay with that. But don't just pick someone off Instagram um, yeah. without you hearing them. Um, if you haven't witnessed them actually emceeing at an at an event, it's so. Or at least, even if you haven't heard them, get recommendation. You know, yeah. ask people that they've worked. You know, that they've. Because I mean, most vendors now, when they will put when they put um, when they put photos on media page, they'll tag the couple or the couple will you know leave comments. You know, contact couple. Con yeah. Like just contact yeah. them. You know, and just ask them. Oh, you know, how did this person do at your wedding? You know, and yeah. I, I always even say to a couple when they're booking me, I'm like, you know, you can, I'm, you, you can, you can contact my previous clients. You know, ask questions, ask people. Don't just book based on on what you see on social media, because I mean, everybody will put their, their best <laughs> best on, on social, social media. media. Nobody yes, will say, well, I did this, I did this, I did that. I did that so yeah so you know oh ask, my goodness. ask questions i mean don't just book and it's not even just for mc alone just generally when for any event that you do yeah ask questions and yes, i couldn't i lost you just there i couldn't hear what you said no i just said that for any anything you're going to do ask questions find out about the person yeah that's so important I, wow i completely i completely agree yeah oh. Tana, I think this is going on for almost an hour and a half. <laughs> and we can show people can still ask more. We can go on for, we can go on for like, for, for yeah. Like, because they're, just, they're just a lot to cover. And the thing is, because people don't, people generally are just not aware. So like this person just said, now, now, now I, I went to a wedding, I was screening all, all through the MC, it was something else. Personally, I would, if I'm a brand, I, I would let so even the parent anybody like you know you can literally just because sometimes they probably didn't know that I agree definitely do your research yeah because sometimes they just maybe they, they didn't even know that what they're saying is you know so definitely tell them that oh, you know this is not um, this is not on yeah yeah <laughs> if you said part two please if you said part two please. we do we're gonna have a part two yes we'll have a part two because this has really been great really I know you have another meeting shortly. Um, so I really do appreciate you. Thank you. That's it's Thank been so really informative, <laughs> really, really good, really, really good. So a huge. Can we show her some appreciation, please? Thank please, you. Please, Thank please, you please. so much. It's been amazing, absolutely amazing. I can tell she knows her stuff. So <laughs> thank you. So if you're looking for Anna, she didn't ask me to do this. She probably has a lot on her plate. This is just me saying it. If you're looking for an event planner that is well organized, knows her stuff, and she'll come through for you. She keeps her cool. She, I've never seen her lose her cool at any wedding that she's done. Uh, real wedding, Tola Ezekiel is the person I'll recommend. And I don't recommend people lightly. So, yes. Thank you so much, Tola. Thank you. Really do appreciate you coming on. Thank you. So, folks, next time, what you can do um, so that we can have more of these etiquette live sessions, let us know um, once we go live, once we go off, um, you can post um, the comment on this video. Just let us know what kind of etiquette um, sessions would you like us to have. We're going to bring Tola back for part two. What are the type of etiquettes would you like us to have? Um, the dining etiquette, um, whatever, travel etiquette, whatever it is. Just let us know the type of et etiquette you love to see and we'll bring different people on to talk about all things etiquette. So Tala, thank you so much.